this is what f I fear about dating now. If you date someone and you do something maybe a little psychotic, dude, everybody just airs it out online. Like there's a whole trend of who the f did I date? And people are name dropping. It's like, there's no privacy. You know whose brand took a hit and then somehow survived? I don't know. Sketchy is gay, I guess. Oh. <laughs> Bro, what? This girl goes to me, girls get in relationships to save money. It's like the saddest thing I've ever heard. Welcome into the podcast, another episode of Living Large. I'm coming to you from my spot in Ohio. And Iggy! Yo, we did it! We did it! We got the virtual setup going. How do you feel? I feel like a vlogger for the first time in my life. Iggy just invested about, what, 1500 bucks? Just about, just shy of that. Tell the people, what'd you buy? Um, I don't know the names of anything because you sent me an Amazon <laughs> list because I'm a fucking child. Uh, I bought a vlogger camera. I got this fancy professional microphone. I got a ring light. I got a stand. Um, dude, this has been really fun, man. I didn't want to stop doing it. So I said, I'm going uh, to throw down the cash to, to keep it going. Yeah, Iggy's invested. We're we're both invested. We've been going pretty crazy on the TikToks, guys. Drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and drop a comment for the algorithm gods. Let's get into that. Let's talk about uh, the TikTok recently because we had a video go viral of you. It's got over <laughs> 3 million views, about 20,000 shares. It's got like 10,000 comments about you talking about your divorce. <laughs> I didn't know people would be that interested in my own personal drama, but apparently they are. Dude, guys, Iggy got collapsed. Let me tell you. Br brother, I have never been, well, I have, but I haven't been roasted like that in a very long time. If I wasn't so, I, I mentioned this to you earlier, like if I hadn't have done the show back in the day and if I hadn't have like had the experience of, a nation full of people shitting on me, this would have broken me. Like, like some of these comments were so fucking mean, dude. Let's read some of these oh, comments. Of and, course you have them up. Perfect. Well, I want to give you a chance to talk about it because there okay, was some okay. co context that was left out of the, uh, the TikTok clip, and I want to give you a chance to talk back to these people. We'll put a clip out on TikTok, but... Uh, talking about how did you make yourself the victim? He understood nothing about <laughs> marriage. Hopefully the girl finds a real man, not not him thinking he was the prize. She dodged a bullet. This man doesn't appreciate commitment and loyalty. God damn, guys. <laughs> I love that she's free now. She definitely deserved better. Uh, so if you want to be single so bad, why waste her time and marry her? Uh, yeah, basically... People don't like what you said, so I want to give you a I chance to talk. Basically, I suck is essentially yeah. the gist of the comments. You're okay. a shitty narcissist. Totally, totally. <laughs> it, it was more like I was a scared little boy. Um, yeah. All right, so I think one thing to clarify, I wasn't intentionally trying to make myself the victim. I think my good friend and producer, Mark Doner, added some elements to make it seem like I was like on the verge of crying. To be um, fair, I did the editing a little manipulative. I cut out some things and I added some sad music. But like, this is a pot, right? Like, this is the intention yeah. is to create. Uh, like, I think the intention is to create a conversation, which at the very minimum we right. did that. Um, but to answer some of the questions or like some of the comments specifically, like there was one, uh, and I'll talk about the ones you mentioned. But there was one that stood out to me that was like, "Oh, like there's proof that you can get older and not grow up." Yeah, that that one affected me. That, that's maybe the only one that that messed me up. But the truth of it is that that situation, like this divorce, this this like very intimate thing I'm expressing to you guys, happened 15 years ago. Right. Like I was a kid. I was 22. Like I didn't know what I was doing, and that's not an excuse. I think I think one of the comments that you brought up was if you want her to be out of it so bad, then you should have just let her go. I'm completely with you that that's my biggest regret my biggest mistake is staying with her because I was scared that nobody else would love me not staying mm -hmm. with her because I loved her and wanted to be in it and make it work I was just I was a scared little bitch yes 100% I take ownership over that that's the thing that I regret the most is wasting her time and putting her through that emotional struggle that rightfully I should have dealt with on my own before making that kind of commitment. But I mean, I, I dare anyone to take a look at their life and, and play everything back and say, I, I handled that perfectly well, especially as a 
21 or 22 year old person. It was a, it was a shitty mistake and I dragged her through it. And for that, I'm regretful, but it was a really long time ago. And I can't even like, if, if that, if that version of me and the version of me now sat down for dinner, they wouldn't know what to talk about. You know, like they're just, they're just totally different people. But I hear the audience, they're right. It was, it's not a fun thing to do. And I didn't handle it well. And, and I also like, I shared a version of the story that was just my fuck ups. Right. There's a lot of stuff in there that went both ways that like, I don't need to talk about, nor do I desire to put anybody else on blast. Like it, it was dysfunctional and it wasn't just me, but I, I take complete ownership over the things that I did. Um, and again, it was, it was a long time ago, man. So I feel like a different person than I did 15 years ago. I'm sure everyone who's in the comments feels different than they did 15 years ago. And it's definitely a, a massive lesson learned for sure. Yeah. I mean, you were a kid, you'd never fallen in love before, and then you've never been alone before. So when you did get that experience of independence, you were like, Whoa, this is something I've never experienced in my life. And I missed out on this opportunity. Um, and also, like, kudos to you for being vulnerable. And you knew, telling that story, that you didn't look good. A lot of people, and I think that the comments saying, like, oh, he's the victim, he's, you're not playing the victim. You're literally telling a story that makes you look horrible <laughs> to the world. You know, three million people saw this video, and it takes a lot to be honest, because you could have sit, sat here and said some different things and made up some bullshit thing. You're like, no, I'm honest, like... I was 22 years old. I'd never been alone before. When I went to be alone, I felt better than I did with her. And yeah, did you waste a couple years of her life? For sure. But, you know, it's funny because I sent you a TikTok with a girl. She said a similar thing that you said. And she wasn't happy in her relationship. She wanted to do this, 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 and this. And I read the comments. And the reason I sent it to you was because, and I said, look at these comments. All the girls are supporting the girl, saying, you do you, girl, go find happiness. But then when you say it, Fuck they're like, this guy. <laughs> marriage is about commitment. You don't know what commitment is. You're selfish, this, that, and the other. And it's so interesting, the double standard when it comes to finding happiness and choosing happiness of women and men. I, I, I think there's just something about like the way that men are perceived by both genders. I, I think... Both genders gave me a ton of shit in the comments. Yeah. I think some of the guys, what I didn't like about some of the support from the guys, it was guys who was like, yeah, fuck that, man. Go out in the streets and bang, girl. I'm like, that wasn't the, <laughs> like, I, I understand how the clip might have made it seem that way, but that wasn't the point of me, like, wanting to get space. It wasn't just like, I want to go out and hook up and and be a man of the streets, but, like, it was more like just finding the things that made me happy and getting to a place where I felt like I had ownership over my own life. And I wasn't just doing things I thought I was supposed to be doing because this was, you know, year number four getting into the relationship and I graduated. And so now I have, Mm -hmm. you know, I have a job and now it is time to get married and have kids. I I didn't, I didn't want to just feel like I was sleepwalking through my life. Like, and you're right. The moment I moved out on my own, I kind of like snapped out of this, like, oh, this is what my life is supposed, like these are the the boxes I'm checking kind of mentality that I had. And it it opened up an entirely new perspective. And unfortunately, it you know, it fucked up another person. But again, it's a, yeah, those comments were crazy. It's like, if I would have put my story to the same like waterfall background and cheesy music that that lady did, people would have been like, oh yeah, he seems like, you know, that's a good idea for him. Congratulations. But I didn't and I got shit on for it. Yeah. I mean, this is why I tell people to don't get into a relationship. Like I always tell people like be single in high school, be single in college, be single when you move to your first place, like really understand yourself and get to know who you are. Because, you know, those people that marry their high school sweethearts, they were never alone. They don't know what really they want. It's always uh, been about us and we and you never really get to find like what you truly like, what really, uh, what really makes you happy, and that's kind of the situation you got into. But um, it was 15 years ago, and a lot of the comments were like, "I hope she finds someone's 
some better and this and values are this that, and the other. So since it has been 15 years, give us the update on your ex-wife. What is? Did she find someone? <laughs> I haven't looked, thought about, or talked to that lady in a very long time. However, I do know that she did. For all those people who are rooting for her, pretty shortly thereafter, found a guy. She has at least two kids now. She got everything she wanted. So for all you ladies out there that were yeah. rooting, that were rooting for her. She is, I think she's still married, or at least she was last time I looked into it. Married, a couple kids, living the life she wanted to have. So kudos to her. I hope she's happy. I really do. I, not in a mean way, but I like, yes, I hope she's happy the same way that I hope like a stranger next to me is happy. I don't really have any like emotional right. investment to it. But yes, I hope she's happy. Did you get the life that you wanted or do you regret it? No, definitely don't regret it. Like, I <laughs> definitely not. Like, It was, man, ending that relationship was probably the single hardest thing I've ever had to do. Like, yeah, my mom was so depressed for a period of time. So was her mom, like having to tell her dad, like there was just so much, I, I, it's just, it's so shitty, but I now at least know who I am where I'd like to go, what I'd like to do. And, and I'm able to do it on my own schedule. Like if, if I would have met that girl now, I'd be like, you know what? I'm done with the club. Like I'm done. I'm done with the bullshit in LA. Like I'm ready to settle down. But if I would have gotten, you know, had a kid at 22, I would have always wondered and been sort of resentful about what, what that life could have been. So at least I made the decision to know what that life is now. Yeah. Let's talk about the dating scene. How's LA been? Fucking the same as you left it, brother. Barren, yeah. sad, weird. So I sent Iggy uh, a video that I wanted to talk about on the podcast. It was Dave Portnoy's ex-girlfriend. She posted Crazy. a video about some dude invited her and her friend to like, I don't know, somewhere in Europe. And she's like, I'm not going. He's He didn't offer me first class. She's complaining about the sheets that she's sleeping on on his bed in Montauk. Uh, she's like, I don't want to go to so, to New York. I need a helicopter to take me. Girl got a ton of heat. But the reason I wanted to bring this up is Iggy, he recently had a fun time with this girl from Texas. And uh, he offered to fly her out. And what did she say, Iggy? <laughs> well, let, let me give a little context here. All right. Like we'd hung out a couple times and there wasn't any like, there wasn't any sign of like, it requiring a certain amount of income or like it, it, it was just nice. It was like a nice couple yeah. dates. And I remember telling you, I was like, this is going well. I'm waiting for it to not kind of like, I'm waiting for yeah. so something to pop up. That's going to make me feel weird about this. Uh, and it took, it took a couple of weeks, but it, it, it finally, like the shoe fell. Finally. Um, we were talking about hanging out again and about, I was, it, it was something to the effect of like, yeah, I'd like to see you again. And, you know, she said the same thing. And I was like, well, I, you know, I'm in LA for a little while. Like I know you're in Texas. And she goes, well, I'd love to visit LA again. You know, wink, wink via text, like <laughs> essentially like waiting for me to offer to fly her out like that. I, I knew that's what the setup was. That's, that's yeah. That was a direction of the conversation. And I'm like, you know what? I haven't really had good experiences as of late. I haven't really been open to exploring relationships. So had a couple good dates. Like, sure, why not? Like, I'm happy to do it. Like, I, I actually don't mind. I don't mind it if I want to, if I say it, if I offer. Obviously, the Montauk yeah. chick situation is psychotic and way different. But if I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't mind. Sure, why not? And so I offer, I, you know, I, I fall into the trap and I go, yeah, you know, I'd love to bring you out. Like, let me know when we can make it work. Yeah. And the first response is, <laughs> is it going to be first class? And I just like head in my hands, like, God damn it. Like I knew, I knew it. I fucking knew it. And I haven't really responded since we've had like, I think initially just to end the conversation, I was like, oh yeah, like, let me think about it. And then it's just like, hasn't been a conversation. Like, I don't, I don't want that's not the kind of lady that I want. And you asked about mm -hmm. the dating life in LA. I just feel like it's that, like one after the other, it's that kind of person. Dude, I just don't understand it. The expectations these girls have 
when they talk to men. I had a girl that I was talking to, uh, I won't name names, but she said to me one time, she goes, and, and I saw a TikTok and this guy was like, when she says that one sentence ca- so casually and you notice that she's not going to be the one, this girl goes to me, girls get in relationships to save money. It's like the saddest thing I've ever heard. I go, what? She's like, it's true. That's Girls get in relationships so they can save money. And I'm like, what the fuck did you just say? Like, shouldn't you get in a relationship to fall in love and marry what, someone and build a life with someone and what, be what happily a, ever after? What a wild idea to want to fall in love with someone that you like. And I was just like, if... Do women really, is this a reality? Like, do most women genuinely get in relationships to save fucking money? I think that is the most, like, coastal bias of all. I'm assuming that she's either L.A. or New York. I'm just assuming. Mm -hmm. Like, these girls that are in their, like, early, mid-20s, they've been trained to, like, get the most, like, to get the most out of the man. And, like... And I, 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 it feels like the first thing they think about is like the net benefit. Like, what do I get from this man? And not yeah. like, how does this man make me feel? Does he make me better? Does he make me feel safe? Like, is he a good guy? Like, do we love each other? But it's like, okay, he meets the minimum required. I mean, you've seen this all the time where it's like, it's a TikTok of like a table of six girls and they're like, he needs to be six feet and make a hundred yeah. and make 200 grand or whatever. And, and the guy's like, you know, that's like 0.0005% of the population or something fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's, that, that is the expectation that I think almost every single girl on either coast I've come in contact with has that exact same expectation. It's, it's unrealistic and it's on, hopefully you don't talk to this girl, by the way, that's like the shittiest thing to say no, ever about a really about being in a relationship. Well, it's interesting because men's social status and social proof is based on how much money they make. It's things. Things, what they can provide, the value that they've earned. Women, their social proof is how do I look? Totally. Something that like is genetic. Like you're born pretty and you have pretty privilege. But the thing is, it's like, okay, you're a hot girl who's 25 right now. Awesome. You can get those private jets. You can get those dinners at Nobu. Somebody will flown. buy you first class. Somebody will. But the problem is, you're not always going to look that way. So your social proof runs out at some point because as men get older, they get more of their social status with money. So do you really think that this guy who's rich and he's happy to bang a hot 25 year old? is going to continue to be happy to bang a hot 35-year-old when he's getting richer, getting more things, his social status is going up. Like it these girls need to get into the love game for love because they love someone, not for what the man can provide because that dude that's buying you the private jet, he's going to get bored of you. It's like Leonardo DiCaprio. He won't date a chick over 25. <laughs> like cuz he just he can't, you know what I mean? So it's like I don't know what I'm trying to say with this, but they really got to switch up their what they want out of life. To to be fair, I think to play devil's advocate so that every girl who watches this doesn't fucking hate us. Like it's our fault yeah. too. Like I look for the so we both look for the social proof first too. Like is she pretty? Do I think she's is she attractive? Like do I want to like am I physically attracted to this person? So like I get they're playing the game. I just feel like, and maybe it's because I'm a little older, maybe at 20, as a 25 year old guy, like I didn't give a fuck about the situation, but like, as I feel like I'm getting exposed to more of that, that like, that feeling of what can I monetarily provide for ladies? It starts to make me feel gross. Like mm-hmm. maybe when I was younger, I didn't care because they didn't expect that from me. But now that, that that's the expectation, it's such a turnoff, dude. And like the physical component of like that sexiness of that girl is just, it, it, it evaporates. So yeah. like, but even for guys, like we look for that, we want their social proof too. Like Leo is the perfect course, example. Yeah. Like yeah, he's yeah. like, okay, well you're right. This 25 year old or 24 year old is way hotter. And I know she wants the same thing you do. So I'm just going to date her. 
like he's never going to find love either, right? Because he's still doing the same shit. Like we need to do that. We I, we yeah. need to do different shit also. I definitely yes. I, I am obviously first drawn to someone based on attraction, but I don't have a type. And people always ask me like, "Oh, what's your type?" You like, are you a, a boobs guy? Are you an ass guy? And I, I mean, obviously, I want to be attracted to you, but personality has always been my thing. Like, can you make me laugh? Do you have a good personality? Are you enjoyable to be around? Those are the most important things for me. Um, I've never really... Because, yeah, I think long-term, right? I've only been in two relationships, and I only got into those relationships because I thought it was going to be forever. Granted, my first relationship... Looking back on it, I there. Was, I mean, I'd never been in a relationship before. I wasn't the best boyfriend. I was, you know, I did my best at, at such a young age. And then even this previous one, I wasn't, you know, I, I, I've mentioned it before. I got into that relationship when I wasn't ready. I shouldn't have. Um, but now that I've had two, I really can reflect on both of them and see a pattern in myself of things that I need to fix and things that I need to do in the future to keep those people with me because I really, I failed myself in those relationships and I'm not going to jump into something. It's so annoying too being back here in Ohio. It's like, Oh, we need to find you a nice Midwest girl. Yeah. For it's like, sure. dude, that is honestly the fucking last thing I'm looking for right now. I just want to like focus on me and get my shit going and, and, make myself happy before I get into that. I hate this whole, like when you go through a breakup, I know it's been like six months for me, but of like people just being like, Oh, we got to find you this. We got to like, why is that such an important thing in society? (laughs) Finding a girlfriend, you know? I mean, who, who's asking you that or who's saying that? Is it your mom and dad? My mom and dad, I go to the golf course with my dad, his old guys. They're like, Oh, you know, you got to find you a nice girl here. I'm like, (laughs) I, I think there's something – I was, <laughs> I was talking to your mom earlier, and your mom was like, getting old isn't easy, and I agreed with her because my back always hurts. But I <laughs> said, I feel like we at least get a little smarter about things. Like, we at least get some emotional yeah. intelligence out of getting yeah. older. Like, if every older guy – and granted, we, ne- we may not want their life, but if every older guy is like, yo, you need to find yourself a good lady, maybe there's something to it, bro. Maybe mm-hmm. there's something to having like a romantic partner that you can lean on and like have a best friend that you know is there and like has your back and you have their back. Like maybe they've been single since they were, I don't know, like maybe they went through what we're going through now and they're like, wow, I wish I would have settled down earlier or I wish I, you know, I wish I could have found this person and experienced more life with like a partner. Like maybe there's something to the old guys that keep saying this shit over and over again. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when I interviewed my dad, I, I asked him, you know, as you've gotten older, what's important to you now as opposed to back in the day? And he said, family and his faith, God. And I think that's something that I, ref- like, the reason that I got out of L.A. was I was like, dude, I've been away from family for 10 years. Actually, 12, because I went to college when I was 18 and I went away. And... The only people that truly have wanted my best interest for the last, for my entire life is my family. So that's why I wanted to come back and surround myself with people who do want my best interest. And yeah, I mean, everybody always says once you become a father, once you become a mother, your whole purpose changes. Like that's the greatest accomplishment in life is creating a new life. So maybe there is something to it. Uh, I'm just terrified. (laughs) I mean, it's, it's scary. So I just want to get dad strength and like lift a fucking Buick or whatever. Right. Um, all right. Speaking of going back home, you're back home, brother. How yeah. is it? How is it being back in the land? How is mom and dad? Give me an update, bro. It's been good. I mean, I, the pace is much slower, but I really, I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I feel like I don't have to, I feel like in LA, I felt like I had to prove things to other people. And here, I just feel like, oh, I just got to prove things to myself. That's awesome. Like, I don't feel like this weird external pressure of like, like, you know, in in LA, we go to Soho House and we go to here and -and so-and-so's driving a Lambo and wearing this and wearing that. 
It's such a such a performance all the time in LA. Performative. My life's so great. Yeah. Uh, I don't feel that here. I feel so relaxed. I feel like I'm really just doing what it is that I want to do. I feel better overall because every single day I go outside and I don't know what it is. Like I literally touch grass. And in LA, I don't remember the last time I (laughs) physically touched green grass because, you know, we live in a city and it's like, you know, you're in your apartment you go to your apartment and then we go to Soho house. Like you're always just going to places here. I wake up in the morning. I'm, I'm staying at my parents right now. I've been staying there for the last month. I set up my podcast in their basement. Uh, I'll get to where I'm moving in a second, but I wake up, I make my coffee. I go on my parents' back patio. I walk in the grass, like the sun's shining. I've been outside more in this last month than probably six months in LA because there's just, and I'm going golfing with my dad. I'm going golfing with my buddies. I went up to my other buddy's house, watched the Indians get, or sorry, the Guardians. They're the Guardians. (laughs) That's right. Can't say the Indians. Don't get canceled, buddy. I'm just like doing more chill things and I feel like time moves slower and it's really nice that the gym is five minutes away. I have this park down the street that I go and do my cardio around the park, around this beautiful lake. And it's just like, you hear the birds chirp. You don't hear sirens when you wake up. It's just so quaint, you know? That's awesome. And I'm really enjoying it. But yeah, I've been here for the last month. I got all my stuff set up here in my parents' basement. It looks I good. Just, uh, yeah, it looks good. It looks like in my apartment. But yeah. I j- just signed a lease in Cleveland, Ohio. Congratulations. Wait, so you're not in Cleveland now? No, I'm I'm more so towards Akron. Okay, all right. Which is uh I'm 30-ish minutes away from Cleveland and like 15 from Akron, so like Northeast Ohio, but yeah, I'm going to be moving up to Cleveland on Friday actually. That's exciting, man. Um I saw the apartment. It looks cool. I was a yeah. little surprised. I was a little sticker shocked. I thought in Cleveland it was going to be significantly less than the amount you told me. What's what the fuck's going on over there? Well, I got a penthouse, you know. Well, of, in course, Trumark- of course, of <laughs> course, you did. You're like, I'm going to go to Cleveland. I'm going to save some money. A guy fucking rents a penthouse. <laughs> got to get the penthouse. Ridiculous. It's right on Lake Erie. It's uh, it's oceanfront. You nice, know? your pond front. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got a view of Lake Erie, and then t- uh, out my bedroom window and on my balcony, I'll see downtown Cleveland skyline. So not much different than my place in L.A. You know, we got a rooftop pool. Uh, got a, uh, gym obviously downstairs, but the cool thing about it. So in this building, it's, it's a younger area. So I went and visited obviously, and there's a bunch of people my age, which is really cool. Cause I need some fucking friends here, you yeah. know, moving to a new city, having no friends. Uh, my sister's actually opening up a med spa, uh, underneath it. The construction is going on right now. There's going to, she's opening up a med spa with her business partners a juice bar and then like a soul space. I forget what it's called, but it's like Pilates and there's going to be like a cold plunge. There's going to be a sauna. So, you know, my morning routine, I'll wake up, go enjoy my coffee on my balcony, head down, work out, hit the sauna, hit the cold plunge, go over to the juice bar, grab a protein shake and uh, start my day. Holy shit. You're fucking, you're basically fucking David Goggins. I'm going to be freaking David Goggins. You're going to be jacked, bro. And she, uh, they do like, they're going to do like Botox and filler. I think they're going to do BBLs. Okay, I don't- you're, okay. You're, you left LA and you're doing the most LA shit in Cleveland. You're doing ice yeah. baths and saunas and fucking, you're going to get filler in your fucking head or something. That's You're, you're going to look plastic when you come back. You're gonna be, you're gonna, you know what? Whenever you come back to LA, you're going to look perfect. Well, my lifestyle is not going to change. It's not like I moved back to Ohio to eat pulled pork sandwiches. I and suppose baked that's. Beans. Right. I suppose. <laughs> like I still want to live a healthy. Li- <laughs> I still want to live a healthy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I still want to live a healthy lifestyle. But if you guys are ever in Cleveland, it's going to be opening up next month. It's called New IQ, and then the juice bar is called Pure Fix. And I told my sister, I was like, I kind of want to work at the juice bar. I think I said this on the podcast. Bro, actually, you once. have to you have to work the juice bar once work a week. Work there bro. like once a week. So I'll figure something out with that. I think it'd be fun. That'd be awesome, dude. I I feel like it would be like a a humbling experience to be like in a because you've never had like a full time regular you've never had like a nine to five. No. But I yeah. wanna like I see a shift in social media content. I think people are looking for more real. And I think like the age of the influencer. I don't know if I've said this on a podcast or not. 
but I've talked to this about other people. I think the age of the influencer is kind of dissipated. Like this unattainable lifestyle is like not cool anymore. It's more reality and like Mm -hmm. real things. And I think if you're getting into social media now, you should really focus on something that's niche. And like a lot, a lot of people, they film their job and what they're doing. And that's kind of the direction I want to go into because YouTube for a while, when I lived next to you in the penthouse at 1600 Vine, it was about buying, you know, designer things, doing expensive, extravagant stuff. And I think that that's just like not as glorified as it used to be. Yeah. And also, you know, as I'm 30, I don't really care to do that. I never really did care to do that. Like I never got into that stuff. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to, and I, the reason I want to work there too is I just want human interaction. Totally. Like I want to meet people. Like I said, it's a young area. I think it'll be good for me socially. And I'm uh, I'm working on some cool things too because now that I've had a lot of more time, I'm working on a clothing line. That's something I've always wanted Whoa, to start. Whoa, I didn't know that. Yeah, I haven't nice, actually told dude. you that. No, that's I'm working dope. on a clothing line. I got to send you some of the stuff. We're doing some samples right now. I'll need an extra get large and whatever you've got. Yeah. It's going to be sick. And then we can rock it on the pod. Because I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, all right, we do this podcast. TikToks are getting millions of views. And I see all these people promoting stuff on TikTok shop. TikTok shop. What is it? TikTok Tick. shop. There you go. There you go. Tip top shop. Uh, and I'm sitting here. I'm like, dude, I'm getting millions of views. I'm wearing a black t-shirt with another brand's hat. Why don't I come up with a clothing line? And wear my fucking clothing line and millions of free views are happening. You know what I appreciate? Number one, you, I love you. I I love, like, I I have a lot of respect for how entrepreneurial you are. It's not easy. Trust, I know it's hard. So, Mm -hmm. like, I love you for it. I'm proud of you. I feel like if you would have had this idea in your apartment in L.A., it just, I I just, like, I remember us, we've talked about, like, other things we can do, other ways we can make money, ways you can like monetize your platform. And you kind of just sat on it for a couple months. I feel like there was too much going on like in your head or like whether it was a relationship, but like it sounds to me that there's a little bit more clarity with you, which is really nice. I'm happy. Oh yeah. I feel so amazing. I feel like I said, like just weight lifted off my shoulders now that I'm finally here. Damn, I think the adjustment period, the adjustment period was a little difficult. Like driving across America in like five days took a lot out of me and the and the second i got here like i started renovating my parents basement like you should have seen this place before it was like the the wall was red uh it was a disaster down here so i primed the walls i taped everything off painted it white you did all uh, that yeah i did it pretty Fucking, me and my dad i pretty much did most of it and then we the hung my tv got everything and then the moving truck got here so it was just like i drove across america the three hour time changed different. I was in my car for pretty much 12 hours a day, getting here, renovating this. Then my shit got here. I moved all that in. I was just like exhausted and burnt out. But now that I've settled in, like I have so much clarity and like I've spending my days like really trying to conceptualize ideas and stuff that I want to do here. And yeah, I'm really stoked for it. Dude, I've always pr- wanted to start a clothing line. And if you guys, if you ever get into social media, one of my biggest regrets, I did merch back in the day. Biggest regret was not starting a brand. Mm-hmm. Like if you look at Logan, he's got Prime and you have Mr. Beast with Feastables and you have Ryan Trahan, he's got some whatever, sour candy or some shit. The biggest regret I have was never starting a brand that was kind of separate from my identity. Like my merch was called, you know, mark donor merch whatever dones.com and like it the the performance and sales of that merch solely dependent on my relevance and my Mm -hmm. promotion and i want to create a brand that's not it'll be attached to me obviously it's my brand but it's not my name it's like i can market this totally on my own and then with my sister's like juice bar i asked her i was like can I sell, can I have like a little shop in there to sell my clothes? And she said, yeah. Yeah, a little rack in there. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, it, 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 this is a bit of an aside, but we haven't had a chance to talk in the last like three weeks. Not, not like yeah. this. Do you know whose brand took a hit and then somehow survived? Whose brand took a hit and somehow survived? I don't know. Sketch is gay, I guess. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> bro, what the fuck? <laughs> Dude, that shit was fucking crazy. That came out of nowhere. What the fuck? It, okay, I have no problem with it. I, I yeah, sketch yeah. is sketch is a fucking man. Butt fuck whoever you want to butt fuck. I don't care. That's your business, okay? Jesus. The, dude, but some of the photos, like like the one where it's like overhead and he's looked like he has blush on, it's just like seeing Sketch as the creator he is now and then seeing those photos, it was just, I thought it was hilarious, bro. Nothing against Sketch. Who cares? Who gives a fuck what he does? Like, I mm-hmm. don't give a shit if he's on OnlyFans. I don't care if he's plugging dudes. Doesn't matter. He's fucking hilarious. Yeah. But the visuals were so shocking. that It was mm-hmm. just like, I was so taken back. And he dealt with it like a fucking champ. I have ne- I, yeah. When I first saw that, I'm like, oh, he's done, I guess. I guess he's cooked forever. Yeah. And he just powered through it. What a fucking, and he's, he's maybe 26, 27. What mm-hmm. a fucking monster for powering through that shit. Yeah, I feel bad for him because obviously based on what he was saying, he seemed like he was going to take his own life and Banks helped him through it. He said his parents helped him through it. And it was really cool to see the support from everyone on the internet saying, you know, we support you, we stand with you. But I think a learning lesson from this for everybody is... Whatever you put out there on the internet is out there. Forever. Forever. Yeah. And there, it's going to get out there eventually, and there are consequences for your actions. And I think, I think had it been a female, the, the response from the community would have been a lot different. I don't think a female would have been supported like they, like they supported Sketch. Like if a girl's OnlyFans got leaked when she did it to to make money when she was 18 and then she became this huge streamer and then, oh, and then, you know, the comments would be like, oh, if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. Mm. And this is what I worry about, too, for the next generation, because you do have a lot of girls doing OnlyFans and someday they're going to stop that OnlyFans, but it's there forever. And someday they're going to marry someone. Someday they're going to have a kid. That kid's going to grow up, he's going to get to middle school, and they're going to do a simple little search of mom and dad, and they're going to find mom's OnlyFans, and they're going to bully the fuck out of him, because naked mom is on the internet, and I worry heavily about the younger generation of an OnlyFans child. (laughs) Bro, it's, growing up, again, I'm 37, there wasn't... When I was a kid, there wasn't fucking internet. It's crazy. I know that makes me sound like I'm a thousand years old, but it's fucking true. Like, when I was a kid, the worst you could tell me was that my mom was stupid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, these, like, So I banged your mom, or your mom goes to college. Yeah. Whatever, right? Like, these kids are going to pull up fucking receipts and videos and just abuse each... It's scary, bro. Like, little kids are ruthless, and now they're going to have the ammunition of, like, your mom's sex tape basically that's that's yeah. that's scary as hell to me it really yeah it, it's it's going to be a problem it's not a matter of if it's when you know for sure yeah man you know what you're right like this is like i mean only fans really started popping like over covid right so like yeah there ha- there hasn't been that next generation a wave of kids whose mom had an only fans for 5 years and has thousands of, dude that's so creepy bro i I, I honestly that 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 is you're right that is really scary for the kids that are going to be growing up in the next decade. Yeah. What kind of sucks for him is he was pretty much outed as being gay. He didn't come forward with that on his own. Yeah, I want to know you. Yeah, but like who, have, who the fuck who cares? Like why why should he he doesn't owe it to us to be like I'm gay. Yeah. Who cares? I want to know with you cuz you have two gay sisters. What was it like when they came out to you? The, the world was so it? the world was so different then. Yeah, like they're ten years older than I am, and the, it was right after college for them. So like it was, it was scary for them. Like people were like being called gay and the hard f word, which I will not repeat, in like mm-hmm. openly and in a mean way, and like looked at like they had a disease. You know, like it was it was so fucking yeah. bad back in the day. Um, 
the thing that I remember most clearly and shout out to my mom and my dad, like we're a Latin family back in the day being Latin in gay was, or ethnic in gay was really, really difficult. Like, like parents would disown you, right? Like kick you out of the house right. kind of thing. I remember, I remember so clearly cause I was only like 12, I think cause my, again, sisters are 10 years older. And I remember my mom and dad being like, it was hard for them because of the, the it just was, it was a different time. Right. But I remember them going, you know, you're our daughter. Like, this is a safe place. We love you no matter what. And not immediately kind of defaulting into what I think most ethnic parents did back then. Right. And it was like, it was, so, and I didn't realize how big of a deal it was at the time, but my parents are fucking gangsters for doing that. And I remember my parents like defending my sisters to our kind of like our, you know, extended family. Cause, cause they were giving my parents share the, like, what are you going to do about it? Like, you know, like, like, are you going to try to get them help or whatever? And my parents were like, fuck you. Like, fuck you. Like, this is our family. Like my parents are gangster for that. So I remember it being really scary for them coming out to my parents. And I, and I remember at least as a little kid, my parents handling it really well. So shout out to mom and dad. Cause that was fucking hard back in the day. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. But I guess it's just, it's, again, it's different now. Like it's also, there's like, there's so much fucking content that it kind of gets like, it's like, oh my God, this is the biggest news for 12 hours. Mm -hmm. And then there's just other shit going on. Like as, as much as you have content that'll live forever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess that the thing, one of the things to think about is also that like that, even though it lives forever, that attention spike, that like scariness of that moment, that's going to go away relatively soon because people are just right. going to think about something else tomorrow. Well, that's the thing with social media. Like, yeah, you can get canceled one week and people will talk about you. But then the next week, you know, you have, yeah, so sketch happened. And then the next week, what? Brooke Schofield just exposes Clinton Kane. Exactly. And then, and then <laughs> Which the is next also week, psychotic, Don by the way. Yeah. The, the next week, Donald Trump gets an attempted assassination. And it's like no one's talking about sketch anymore because right, it's, right. there's always fucking something, dude, that everyone's talking about and like going crazy about. Uh, let's talk about that. Actually, that Brooks Schofield Clinton Kane situation. Brother, I was hanging out with my ex on the couch, and she was like, <laughs> Wait, "Listen to that sentence." I was hanging out with my ex. <laughs> yeah, but healthier than the situation I yeah, heard. Yeah, yeah. And like, she's scrolling, and she's on TikTok. And I remember I was playing the new NCAA. By the way, fantastic video game. Good job, guys. Yeah. And um, all of a sudden, I hear all right, guys, this is part 18 of why she's a dumb bitch. And I'm like, what the fuck? Who, what is happening? And she gives me the whole background. And I'm like, number one, shut the fuck up, both of you guys. You're, the girl's obviously right? just doing this for clout, mm -hmm. clearly. And the guy is, I don't know who he, apparently he's an artist. I have no idea like what his stuff is. But his responses were so like, it just felt like he needed to be validated. Like, just shut, who cares, bro? You guys had an argument. You guys, had, like, so, she lied about some shit. Who, the, move the fuck on, bro. Like, there doesn't need to be this documentary about yeah. the bullshit between you guys. It's ridiculous. Well, this is, what, this is what pisses me off about the era we're in. Why the fuck are you guys talking about this shit on social media? Thank you very like, much. Is there any, pri like, this is what f I fear about dating now. Bro, if you date someone and you do something maybe a little psychotic, dude, everybody just airs it out online. Like there's a whole trend of who the fuck did I date? And people are name dropping. It's like there's no privacy, right? Both my breakups, I, I had them out there publicly, but it was a very, the vi both videos I made, loving, hey, great memories with this person, close the chapter. Could I have gone the route with like, dude, she did this, she did this, she did this. What does that accomplish? Right. It's like, it's like what you said. It's like, oh, let me just tell the world what I went through so they fucking feel bad for me. And it's ridiculous, dude. And it's like, also, it, that shit happened two years ago. They broken up for two years. And she fucking two years later releases this whole ass thing about their relationship and how he's like a scumbag. He cheated on her, this, that, and the other. What does that achieve two years down the line? Go your way. Go your way. Find someone else. 
and and don't don't put us in the middle. We don't give a fuck. No, but it's like and just, I, just, I, these girls are so obsessed because these fucking reality TV shows with Love Island right. and The Bachelor. They're so obsessed with other people's relationships and turmoil because it makes them feel better about themselves. Like they sit there and they look at this and like, or like they sympathize with it. Whatever. I don't. I don't get it, dude. I, it, it just felt like, and I don't know who this girl is. She, like, I don't. She, she might be an artist. I have no idea who she is, but it just felt like. This is her like 15 minutes and she's squeezing every fucking drop. Like I dated this famous guy and here's all the drama and look at me, look at me. Like it just, it's just, oh God, it, it was exhausting to hear. But to be fair, I listened to all 25 <laughs> parts of his shit. I'm like, you know what? She is a dumb lady. No, like I, there is something and further to like the sketch thing, like Sketch happened two weeks ago, and to your point, like I watched 23 TikToks of this guy defending himself, and I'm like, what? What? Why did I just spend 30 minutes doing this? Like, I, I don't, yeah. I don't know why in my brain I'm like, this is a good use of my time, but I was, I hated it, but I was captivated by it. It's, it's scary. Well, she was successful on her own. She had that podcast. She has that podcast with Tana Mojo, or my, however the fuck you say her name. Good for her. But like. I don't know. I'm. I know Clinton, and it's funny because she met him at his concert in L.A., and he actually invited me to that concert as well. So I went to that concert. So I was like, he's not only inviting just girls to his concert. Right. He he's got me. friends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like he he DM me too. He's like, hey, Mike, come also, on to my concert. <laughs> that was a horrible accent. Also, like, he's a fucking like pretty popular musician. If you yeah. think that he's, if you think that you're the only girl he's talking to, you're dumb. I'm not saying, like, I don't I, I don't know what happened, like, after they said we're commit. like, there was so much drama, but, like, if he's hooking up with girls while you're kind of dating or talking, he's a popular traveling musician. Fucking figure it out. Of course he's talking to other people. This isn't, this isn't rocket science. Let's talk about the uh, Donald Trump assassination. What Ooh. was it like in L.A. hearing about that? Because they were talking about it all day, every day here. Well, I'm a conspiracy theorist, so... I've gone pretty deep what, down the wormhole. What are your thoughts? All right. My immediate thoughts are, it just seemed so easy for him to be in that position. Like, this is the CIA, right? Like, this is Secret, Secret Service, service yeah. right? Excuse me. This is Secret Service. For, it's either like the most colossal fuck up of all time, or he was, for some reason, allowed to be on that, like... He's got a clear line of sight. Yeah. A 150, 200 yards or whatever, not that far away from the president where if your secret service, wouldn't you be like, hey, this, this roof here, we should probably just be up here or like make sure we check this out because yeah. there's a very easy shot to the, like that, that part to me is like very fucking sketchy. And the kid's 20, which I don't know how much that matters, but it's weird. And he was also like in a black rock commercial did you see that yeah, yeah. like it's just it's what it's is all, black it's, rock uh financial institution okay it's all just and then did you see that the I, I forget who i think it was it black rock they shorted donald trump trump's company yes, stock yes yes bro and they also shorted rumble or something like that or truth social whatever he owns right before it's like dude it, it's fishy. It's all. It, all I'm saying is that it's fishy. And if I'm the Secret Service, that's probably the one of the very obvious places I'm making sure there isn't activity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's all, that, that, that's sure all that feels weird to me. But and then it, now you got you got Joe say, Biden stepping out. Who cares, dude? That guy doesn't know where he is. Yeah, I don't even know if he knows he dropped out. But apparently, I, my mom just told me this. She's like, a p word is he's going to step down from the presidency and Kamala Harris or Kamala, however the fuck you say her name, is going to take over. And it's funny because back, I can't remember if it was Reagan. I think it was Reagan. Uh, he said that the first female president would probably be a, a vice president mm. first, and then the president would die, and that female president would become president. And I think we're gonna see it happen. Feels like a cheap win to me for her. Like, dude, that lady sucks. She is so fucking stupid, bro. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, all politicians are idiots. Like, I don't know enough about politics or her like stances specifically to speak on it. But like, if I'm, if I'm the first ethnic 
female president of the United States. I'd want to get voted in. Right. I, I, you know what I mean? Like, it feels kind of like a cheap win for the culture here. Like, I get, I get it. It's monumental, obviously crazy. First time ever in history, all this stuff. But wouldn't you want to win it outright and not just, ha- not just because this 800 year old wizard is fucking too <laughs> tired to run the country? Like, it just feels cheap to me. Yeah. And there's no shot Biden would beat Trump in golf. He just did a golf channel, or a video with uh, Bryson DeChambeau, and he's, um, dude. I thought this guy was full of shit when he said he was good at golf. I watched that video. This guy can golf. The guy can golf. He's got a wonky swing and a terrible putting stroke, but the dude can hit the ball straight and down the fairway. Guy can golf. I mean, he owns like 10 different courses. He better be at least average at golf. Yeah. Um, What a... You were really excited this past week for the uh, Jake Paul fight. What'd you think? Man, I I was happy with it. I really was. I'm... Dude, I'm such a big fan um, of Mike Perry. He's an absolute fucking psycho. He is like a, a true meathead's meathead. He like enjoys getting punched in the face. He's he's fucking and he's like he, he, the guy's had CTE since he was born. Okay, he's a Neanderthal, <laughs> but he's fucking funny, bro. And like he's a badass, and he he's a bare knuckle fighter. Like he punches people with his bare hands and gets hit with his bare hands. It's You've got to be a tough motherfucker to do that. I don't care who you're mm-hmm. fighting. Yeah. That being said, I've watched, I think, maybe every one of Jake's fights. I've been in an amateur fight, got my ass kicked. Kimbo Slice yep. Jr., not a, getting punched in the head sucks cock. Um, but Jake looked good, dude. Like, if you think it's all a show, you're a fucking hater. Jake mm-hmm. looked like a much more polished boxer. Now, granted, the conversation is going to be he's not fight, he's not boxing other boxers, he's boxing UFC guys and he's boxing bare knuckle guys. Or, or even though they're talented in their own thing, they're completely different games, dude. Boxing yeah. and bare knuckle fighting are different fucking games completely. Jake was a better boxer, and honestly, I'm kind of excited to see if he ever fights another real boxer. But for the time being. He looks good, man. I'm I I have zero hate on the guy. He looked like a good boxer the other day. I got to agree with you. I mean, he looks good. He's proven that he can beat up people that aren't boxers. He's got Mike Tyson next, but then he called out Alex Pereira, another UFC guy. It's like at what point does he have to fight an actual in their prime boxer cuz he he says he's in his prime, you know? Like is he gonna fight Canelo when Canelo Canelo's Floyd Mayweather's age? Like, we need to see him fight a twenty and zero boxer like tomorrow. Do, do we know? though? Do we? <laughs> like, that's not the gimmick. Like, the gimmick is I'm gonna. The gimmick is you guys hate me, which he's done such a good job of making people hate him. So they're gonna mm-hmm. tune in, and I'm willing to see if you get your ass kicked by this maybe slightly younger, slightly more athletic guy than the previous guy who's not a boxer and who, who hasn't who hasn't boxed since he was 12 years old. Like, that's just the gimmick, bro. If I'm him, I never do. Why would I do that? Because you, you lose your aura immediately. And then, like, who cares yeah. after that? He, he, can't ri- he can't risk the aura loss, bro. He has to keep beating up these fucking truck driving idiots <laughs> that are former UFC guys. Like, he has to. Yeah, that Mike Perry guy looked horrible. Like, he never had his hands up. He was, was like, walking weird. Dude, he was, he's a fucking Neanderthal. But if that was bare knuckle and he hits Jake one time, he's dead. You think? if Brother, like, if I don't know what it's like to get hit with my bare knuckles. Neither does Jake, I don't think. But that's his shit. Like, I've seen that guy get punched in the fucking head over and over again with bare knuckles. And then he touches you a couple times and you like he is okay getting hit in the face, bare knuckle. The other guy is not okay with it. It hurts too much. Like that, that's mm-hmm. that that's what he's good at. He's just a fucking brick wall of idiot. Where do you see Jake's future going? Do you think it's boxing or you think he'll give it up? Nah, dude, he's making he's making bank, bro. He's got he's got a, he's got a couple really big bags left. Jake's career will end when when people go we're done watching you fight these non guys. Like to your point, like we're done yeah. watching you fight these non professional boxers fight one of those where we don't care. And then he's going to do that. And maybe by that time, maybe it's competitive, but that's, that's, that's where it's going. He's got a couple other guys he can call up. I'm sure. Yeah. 
You got any other topics you want to discuss, or you you feel good about uh, this episode? President got shot at. Sketches gay. Uh, <laughs> bitches are doing bitchy things, and um, we're back in action. I feel like we covered all of it. Yeah, really good first episode. Let's uh, let's get one in next week. I'll be moved into my new place, and I'll have a lot it. to talk about. But it's good to hear from you again, and good to talk. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Sorry if there's any minor technical difficulties. This is our first uh, virtual session. Well, but to be fair, it's actually good. it's actually our second because yesterday's was terrible. <laughs> we filmed one yesterday and it just didn't go well. A lot of technical difficulties, but we'll see you guys next week. Hit that subscribe button. Peace. Peace.